Audio Jungle. Why are you being so late? I'll wait for you for almost 30 minutes. I'm sorry. But hey, you are the one who is the 20th floor. Hey, come on. We have lift facility right now. So there's a problem. There's no problem for that. I think there's a skeleton actually. Why? You do. So Look at this. Look at this. You think I'm going to ride an elevator after reading that? Oh my god. Elevator to death. Foreign construction workers were killed after the elevator fell from the 13th floor at the construction site and the construction at Precinct 15, Putrajaya. Oh Ayu, I think that we have learned something about this in the class. This is about occupying celebrity, right? Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, there are the case that we learned, which is uh, the fact was quite similar to this case, which is uh, in the case of Datuk Bandar di BKL against Ong Kok Pek, 1993. Oh, Do you that remember case. that case? Yeah, I remember. In the case of Datuk Bandar di BKL against Ong Kok Peng 1993, the plaintiff was badly injured when he fell down the shaft of a lift. The area was poorly lit and there was no warning sign, guard or barricade at the lift door to indicate that the lift was out of order. Since the plaintiff was a licensee, the court held that the duty owed was not to expose them to hidden perils and to warn them of existing traps or concealed danger. A trap is something which involves the appearance of safety under circumstances cloaking a reality of danger. Thus, in this case, there existed a trap. In the case of Chandra and Anak Lelaki Subia against Tokers Marine Limited 2009, the appellant worked for the respondent as a steep door. On 18 October 2005, the appellant was instructed by the respondent to move cargo containers on board a vessel, the Tasman Mariner. Prior to the commencement of work, no safety inspection or safety briefing was carried out by the respondent's supervisor. Neither was any safety equipment supplied to the appellant even though he was required to work from high. During engaging with his work, the ladder which the appellant was standing suddenly detached and caused him to fall about 10 meters into a hatch of the vessel. Resulting there too, he sustained severe injury. It has been held that the common law required employers to take reasonable care for the safety of their employees in all the circumstances of the matter. The issue arises from this case with whether the employee need to take responsibility to the safety of his employee when they are working at a third party place. The court held that an employer could not wash his hands of all the responsibility for the safety of his employees simply because the employees were sent to work at a site controlled by others. The law continued to place on an employer an obligation to take reasonable care for its employees' safety. The judge referred to the principle 
in the case of stocks against gas, keen and netafold, bolts and nuts, limited 1968, and Smiths against Austin Lifts, limited 1959. The law continues to place on an employer an obligation to take reasonable care for its employee's safety and an employer's enduring duty is not to expose his employees to unnecessary or avoidable risks at the workplace. In this situation, the employer did not provide any safety equipment to the employees even knowing the work as a stewarder exposed them to risk of falling and other injuries. And because the duty to provide safety belts and harnesses were neglected, the court held that the respondent are liable for the injuries suffered by the employee. The deciding factor in this regard is whether the person has sufficient control over the premises. As the second one, the court will ask if the plaintiff is legally a visitor. So, who is the visitor? So, the visitor is a person expressly permitted to stay on the premise. If the occupier knowingly tolerates and takes no steps to prevent another person from entering the premises, that person also as a visitor. Thirdly, the injury must occur on the premises. And last but not least, the injury must be caused by the defective state of the premises and the damages must not be legally regarded as remote and should be possible. So I guess that's how it works in First thing you have to know that uh, a lot of this 
issue of the occupational safety is already now included into contract of employment. So employer shall provide in the employment agreement some clauses or provisions that they will uh, ensure the safety of the workplace. Because if the workplace is not safe, you don't want to work. Uh, and not only that, this is made compulsory because we already have what we call it the Occupational and Occupational Safety and Health Act, yeah, or SHA, Occupational Safety and Health Act. So this is already a statutory duty that when you employ someone in your workplace, it, you must ensure the obligations of the employer. Uh, so it is statutory. It is both statutory duty and contractual obligation. Mm. But beyond that, thoughts also play a very important role. Yeah, thoughts play important role uh, because in absence of any contract or in absence of any law, statutory law, still thoughts will play its role. Mm. Yeah. So in Malaysia, we actually have this three corner protection. Yeah, one is through the uh, con uh, agreement, the other is through the legislation, and third will be the, uh, the thought. The thought will be on the basis of negligence. Mm -hmm. And because it is a duty of any reasonable employer, you want to employ people, then it is a duty to, for you to provide some safety and security, you know, and cleanliness. You already want to maybe you're learning that can be categorized into several types of uh, people. Yeah, uh, one of them is trespassers, and you see the hierarchy is that trespasser is the lowest. Yeah, the highest is what the highest is contractual entrant. Yeah, contractual entrant, those who have contract with the occupier. The second, uh, licensee first or invitee? invitee? Invitee, okay, invitee means someone who was invited. Yeah. Among others, the uh, workers actually, yeah, they were invited because they had some some uh, uh, arrangement for that. Or licenses, yeah, like some public houses, public buildings, yeah. So at the lowest day is trespassers. People were arguing, why you, why we uh, protect them? And as a matter of fact, it can be related to another principle, yeah. Uh, on the issue of public policy and illegality that if you are doing something illegal then you cannot yeah, enforce your right so you must come to the court with clean hands yeah? but what, why would a trespasser be allowed? Uh, so it's something like which is contradictory so this is again this goes back the philosophy behind it is that uh, we should not while, while we would not recognize or uphold uh, um, illegality eh, to be held in the court, but then we should not uh, allow ourselves to um, cause further, further, further problems for them. Yeah, in Islamic jurisprudence, we have this principle: la doror wala diror. La doror wala diror. Okay, you must uh, avoid damage, but in doing that, you must not create more damage. Yeah some role in, in doing that. Meaning you have to, if you know there is possibility like that, then you better put some some uh, precautions. We have interviewed one of the IIM security guide, Ismail bin Osman, age 56. Tentang yang pertama Pak Cik kat sini ialah pertama sekali Pak Cik menguatkuasakan undang-undang yang ditetapkan oleh UIA dan hmm. dikeluarkan oleh UIA hmm. uh, Antara tugas Pak Cik saya percaya ada rondaan ke? Ada rondaan ah, Ada roda, rondaan setiap uh, 4 jam sekali uh -huh. Kalau kalau apa ni? Batu apa-apa kecemasan ke? Uh -huh. Pak Cik memberi bantuan kepada perkara-perkara yang kecemasan dia lah uh -huh. Jadi uh, Pak Cik pernah tak mengalami apa-apa kecederaan semasa buat tugas saya Pak Cik? Takat ini Pak Cik tidak ada uh, kejadian semasa bertugas lah. Ha, jadi uh, masa Pak Cik baru naik tu, ada ke Pak Cik rasa uh, suasana atau persekitaran UI ini selamat? Pada anggap kawasan UI selamat, tapi uh, ada juga masa-masa yang tertentu dia tak tak selamat. Ha, hmm. Contohnya? Contohnya. Uh,
Pagar aku rasa malah-malah ni Tak berapa selamat pasal Pagar ni senang dirosakkan oh. Senang dirosakkan Gunting je boleh masuk oh. ha, Contoh gitu kan ha, ha, ha. Kalau boleh UIA ni memberi Membuat pagar yang selamat lah Macam buat pagar Kecap batu-batu This crime happens also due to the uh, absence of some or, or a breach of certain duty by the occupier, which makes it, you know, possible uh, for the crime to take to take place. Then there is uh, a chance uh, for uh, getting a compensation against the employer. And the employer, but it is not under crime, but rather under uh, negligence. Yeah, that's how. It This is a very nice video. Yeah. You could understand like almost yeah, everything. Understand everything. Yes. Oh, it's already awesome.